Excuse me. Excuse me. Who are we going to start with? Chris, go on. Uh, first of all, I'd like to ask, do you still have any association with the Go Cars company? Oh, yeah, I'm only, yeah, that's because it was on the local news, um, I think, um, yesterday, I think it was, Yeah. that the company has actually folded, and there are other towns in Cornwall, large towns, like Truro and Falmouth, and such yeah. like, some in Devon, that are owed hundreds of thousands of pounds. Yeah, I, I did see the same thing and thought the same thing, but obviously, with the news yesterday, we haven't really had time to look into it, but... Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is um, the Buchanan and Harvest Society will be exploring what needs to be done for New Harbour to be an historic harbour. Um, the value of that, that is a, it's a designation, but it is really good for tourism. But more importantly, it means that the actual owners of the council can use that as a means of um, aiding them in when they need to apply for funding. So um, I can't really think of anything else, but I think there's a gentleman here who wants to ask you something. You want to ask me, or is it going to be Councillor Roy? It'll be Councillor Roy. Oh, yeah, I thought it might be. Um, yeah, there's a couple, couple of things. Do you find the management advisory group? report held on the 22nd of September 2022. There's an application for half a million pounds in the shared prosperity fund has, has been applied for based on a all part need of one million pounds to repair the embankment on the wall side. Um, feasibility report should be available end of October that in October 2022, this will inform what best solution will look like and could include possible more solutions. Do you know anything about it? Okay. Uh, so they're talking specifically about a bit of embankment that um, fell into the canal, which abuts Crescent Car Park. So it's everything that's effectively it's right east of Vancouver Bridge. No, Falcon Bridge. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're talking about the same. That's a bit. million pounds to fix that. Uh, right. Okay. No, I don't know. They uh, the, the report that you're referring to was guesswork, right at the time because they didn't have tenders in. Right. What I can say is that that work is actually due to commence on Monday. Uh, and there is going to be sheet steel piling, which is not a particularly cheap process um, for the from the bridge up as far as where the damage is obviously evident. And then it's going to be capped off with a, a reconstituted concrete capping stone uh, with an enhanced um, launching area for the their users. Yeah, that's right. right. And, and that's and the intent was that was all going to be funded from the fund which you. Okay. And it also would be referred to, but probably I feel fairly sure that there would have been some co-funding from Cornwall Council within that. But all that work is being delivered as part of the dredging project. So if it was a million pounds, maybe some of that money might have gone. I mean, I can clarify that for you I mean, if you particularly want me to, but the, the funding stream and the amount is, I don't want to say it's irrelevant, it, it just, it's not irrelevant, but just seemed... the important thing to us is the job's being done. Yeah. So it is referrable to yes. the banks there? Yeah. Okay, next question. You. Um, how much silt has actually been removed from present car park at this time? <laughs> right. You asked me this question before. Okay, I'll, I'll, I, 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 and I gave you the wrong answer, which you picked me up on, because I gave you the answer of how much silt has been removed from the canal. As of last week, excuse me, <coughs> as of last week, it's approximately 1,600 cubic metres 
right? Because that's not the question which you asked. No. Quite right. So that's removed from the other basin. And there's an astronomy. But that was as of last week. Yeah. And that's now being held in those Karate basins. Right, they've, they've had, and I, I have this conversation, I was going to report on this later, but it will safely be reported okay. on this later. Uh, they've had a um, problem because we've actually just had the wettest February, not in recent memory, but actually yeah. on record. And the principle of those drying bays is that the moisture which is held in the sill evaporates into the um, atmosphere after it's been through the um, <coughs> vacuum okay. um, cyclone machines. Yeah. And, and the final drying phase was to take place there. But because it's been the wettest February, the laws of physics mean that the evaporation expected so hasn't been, hasn't been able to happen. So, so the, the answer to your question is some has been removed. I think the holding bays are pretty much nearly full now. Yeah. Um, and, and they're not removing it as quick as they would like to. Um, and I did have that conversation with the site foreman just this afternoon. The holding bays hold there. 10,000 cubic meters. Yeah. So they have to be filled up three times yeah. to remove the seal. Yeah. You will need 375 lower loads mm -hmm. to remove the seals. Yes, and I did check that fact with you after your That's series of emails. I was, I was wrong. Yeah. I said 260, but I was looking at yeah. a 20 ton lorry. Well, yeah. a 20 ton lorry carries 16 tons of yeah. seals. And those back of the fag packet calculations yeah. were approximately right. But it's still. 375 lorry loads and nothing's been removed from the car park so far. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know if any, I'm sure some must have gone, but maybe it hasn't. Maybe, maybe, I think the story that I was told was they haven't been able to get it as dry as they wanted it to be. So maybe you're right, none, ha none at all has gone. Yeah. But um, I think that with a bit of dry weather, they are hoping that they will be imminent. Because the original plan was to have dewatering bags, which are Gore-Tex. Mm -hmm. which keep it dry if it rains and that's it's a one-way system mm -hmm. no, I'm gonna, uh, okay. I, coming, I did spot one lorry going away one day when i was up shoulder hill but i was too too slow to get my phone out to capture okay, so, but, but one not definitely one, one yeah. yeah there might be a few but not yeah, so the most so important thing is the silt's out of the canal and it, of its way um obviously we want to get rid of it before easter but i think the best one in the world that's you can't that. predict what the weather that we just had so that's not gonna happen is it? No. so that we've got all businesses that rely on the canal at easter yeah. that aren't going to be able to trade yeah. uh, well they will be able to trade uh, well, no, of course they will. well there's nothing stopping them is there it's just the car parking won't there won't be such depth of car parking nearby okay Happy? Yeah. yeah. Well, not happy, no. but it's answered my question. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm going to do something I've not done and stand up. I'm, I'm speaking as a member of the community, not as a councillor. I have to very sadly report the death of Mrs. Barbara Blood, who some of you may remember as the wife of the late Dr. Tony Blood. Uh, much love, GP and Hugh and Stratton. Uh, Mrs. Blood was within six weeks of her hundredth birthday, which makes this occasion doubly sad. Um, she was a stalwart by the community for many years, a great supporter of St Andrew's Church in Stratton, and I'm sure she'll be sorry and sadly missed. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Yes, just want to bring a couple of things to the attention of councillors, um, bearing in mind your love of this place and your connection one way or another with Butte Climate Partnership. I've noticed Butte Climate Partnership showing interest in developing dunes to save us from the effects of oh, climate amazing, change. Amazing space for sound, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, just to inform you, the dunes idea may be fine. There are two problems with other things to protect you. The breakwater, Tommy's pit is now leaking like a sieve again. And some of the repairs that were done last year are no longer in place. And also, if you'd care to go down to the canal, especially at low water, if you walk from the steps by the sea lock, walk down those steps, yeah. here over the edge of the pavement, there are two places where there is water 
leaking presumably it can only be coming from the canal at a higher level so it's leaking down under the bank under the pavement and out into the canal in two places it's been doing it for quite some time you mean out into the river out into the river it's not coming out in pipes it's coming out in gaps between um stonework uh, it occurs to me that if that's undermining the walls of the canal, that's potentially quite a disastrous situation. It's not going to get any better, just as the breakwater isn't going to get any, get any better. So um, if they do put sand dunes there, there's a pretty good chance they'll be washed away. I think um, maybe somebody ought to have a little think about what order to do things in. That's it. Um, Sean's our rep. Are you, I can see you scribbling away there, Sean. Did you raise that? I did attend the um, the first Ian Waterloo Nathan Grayson Sand Dunes group, which was really well attended. There were 15 people there, mm -hmm. so it was like a really busy evening. Um, and initially, there wasn't any conversation as such about like an actual plan of action. It was more about forming the group and then doing some analysis about what might need to happen. But it's definitely not about moving anything physically. It's more about kind of actively watching and in, in maybe potentially removing invasive species if they exist, but we need to actually ascertain whether that's the case. Um, but initially it's just about setting up an interested group of people who are willing to keep a watching group on the dunes and potentially their kind of future management and their future movement, whatever that looks like. So yeah, it's very open at the moment, but I think your kind of input would be really interesting in that group if you're willing to get involved just to kind of bring your perspective to it. Because, yeah, I think it's you make some really relevant points. The sand dunes are only one part of the protection that you know is afforded to the town by natural and man made features. And I think we do need to be really mindful of things like the canal banks and also the state of the breakwater. So it's a really important piece of infrastructure. So yeah, I'll feed that back into the group. But if you would like to get involved, that'd be awesome to see that. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, last summer, Cornwall County Council <coughs> um, used ground penetrating radar to scan the whole of that um, bank from the lock gates up to I think where the sluices were running. So Cornwall County Council might have an answer to what's happening there. So, so that finger of land that goes from effectively the lock gate back up towards the castle is something which, in my mind, is it, it's it's a weak link and incredibly important to it go if you want to have any canal, um, and, and it would probably physically alter the structure of the way the river's running and the whole the whole shooting match is is knackered if that goes. Um, and there has long been. Uh, concerns about voids in that bank. You might remember about four or five years ago, there was a program of backfilling it with a, a very liquid grout, and this, the stubs of that grout are still evident. But I think the voids are back. And what um, uh, what Richard was saying about the water coming out of the bank, I'm not sure if we know about that. I hope we do, but I'll, I'll, I'll report it in when I get home this evening to make sure that our engineers are aware of that. Um, I can send you a video, Peter. Yeah. It might be useful actually. I, I was going to talk very quickly about this because you'll know that we I've talked previously about the sand rails and the need to cap what effectively is that cobbled section because it's very porous. Um, and we had trouble last time we came up with a proposal because they were effectively just getting concrete over it. And there was a concern about the heritage value of the sand rails. And then the engineer that was doing that particular work left Cornwall Council, it got lost in the ether and it's been brought back in the last six months we've got a new engineer on board and he's currently working out new plans which will respect the rails but whatever happens there will have to be a lot of physical work done to that bank to preserve it properly so we're not just continually maintaining it, it needs to be altered to make it into a state that's going to withstand the weather properly um, so it will mean a physical difference um, i talked to our outdoor um funding lady this afternoon to ask where we were with it and she says they're applying for funds now for the 2025 capital programme. So all that will happen in the short term is re repair work, but there will be a significant piece of work done in the next financial year. But we need to get the plans past the community and past planning and heritage England. Okay. 
Thanks. Go then, Doc. Let's have it. Oh, so long. Barrett picked me too. This business in Tommy's pit. Yeah. Well, the Cornwall Council haven't got any money, which is a surprise. But that boy has got three million pounds, so can't he chip some money in to pay for the repair of Tommy's pit? When you say that boy, do you mean you climb the park? Well, I don't remember his name. Rob. Rob Dooley, but it's the organisation. I don't think they've given Rob three million. Yeah, but the organization view climate partnership, yes, they've been awarded 1.9. Is it? Yeah, well, yeah, you know, surely that's the idea of the money yeah, to protect you. So, couldn't he sort of pay for the job? Uh, <coughs> I don't know the exact nature of the funding, but the, the first batch of money they got was to. Essentially, set up groups to talk about and discuss the problem and look at solutions. Now, I'm paraphrasing here, Darkies. And they have recently, I mean, Sean, you probably understand it better than me because you attend the meetings. Can they spend that money on the Great Water? So, no, basically, all of the, the money that has been allocated from the lottery to the climate partnership is already allocated for specific projects within, you know, the project three. But it's definitely something that they could be part of a conversation about because, as I said, it's kind of critical in that structure. And the climate partnership has kind of opened a door for another tranche of funding called CTAC, which is more, more about coastal and transition and resilience. So sure, potentially there's an option for that to happen within that funding, but we don't know yet because that hasn't, that hasn't kind of been. So that money isn't actually going to. Help you at all. It's, it's just going to be put there. It's not all so so like it's it's physical infrastructure, that particular like pot of money, but that money is facilitating other funding coming into the community that could be for that infrastructure. So, yeah. And this business with the dunes. Yes. Are you going to try to lessen the dunes? I'm not going to. I'm going to do it. So, I'm just expecting you to show the back. As I said to Richard, it's like, Initially, it's about getting volunteers that are interested in keeping a watching eye on what the dunes do. And if you're going to remove sand, I don't think that well, well, the easy go down. Can I have some from my morning? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was, I'm it's, it's, it's leading up to the other question because for boat issues, they've taken, when they don't be sand at the locks at the beginning of the year, they tip it on our mornings, and then we've got sand. And now some knobhead from Cornwall Council, where this come from, okay. has decided that she has to put the sand the energy because it's contaminated. So they have to take it away in law, isn't it? Yeah, so that's that's just the legal question. Yeah, it's just the law. Oh, that yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you walk down and look at my moor, isn't it? All right, that's, we're not having a conversation amongst the public, Jackie. Please choose your words more carefully. What's my job? Well, <laughs> right. try so, yeah, try, try a little harder, please. Okay, cool. That's that section done. Right, receive policies and accept reasons for non attendance. Sure. Councillor Hannah for health reasons and Councillor Browning for personal reasons. Thank you. To receive any declarations of interest on items on the agenda. I proceed. No? No. Cool. <laughs> To note the decision notice relating to a code of conduct complaint, Tony Gibbs versus Councillor Gibbs. I'm going to have to make a little statement about this, and I've got some notes in my phone. Right away. Okay. At the January meeting of the full council, comments were made towards the end of the meeting by Councillor Gibbs relating to discussions which were taking place internally within the town team. In relation to their plans to setting up a suitable governance structure, I tried to intervene to encourage Councillor Good to desist. However, she did continue to speak on the subject. Members of the town team who might have responded to these comments were not present. Subsequently, the chair of the town team made a complaint to Cornwall Council's monitoring officer, stating that the comments were not a true reflection of the town team's situation and that they incorrectly portrayed the town team in a poor light. And that the utterance of these comments was therefore a breach of the town council code of conduct. The monitoring, sorry, monitoring officer considered the complaint and viewed the recording of the meeting. He has now made a ruling which upholds the complaint and states that 
counts of guilt did breach the code of conduct on three counts and is required to apologize to the complainant. The report from I'm switching pages. The report from Council of Good should not be considered by callers when we debate and decide upon the town team government's proposal later in this meeting, as the report has been deemed to contain inaccuracies. As the original comments were made in public and found to be inaccurate, it is important to set the record straight publicly, which is why I'm happy to make this official statement. This statement does not absolve Council of Good from following the requirements of our, as stated in the monitoring officer's ruling on the case. That's my statement on it. Is everybody happy to note that? I'll yeah. second. Is that, yeah, all in favor of noting it? Against. Abstain. Okay. You've noted it. Uh, the mayor is what? Like in capital stars. Um, there's been a few things on this month. Um, obviously, the big one would have been the storm tower, which sadly has been delayed due to the weather, but has been rebooked for the 26th. Um, I attended the Play Park sort of opening of Katie's Corner, which was really, really well done. Councillor Purchase deserves some credit for setting that up. There was um, the tree planting ceremony. A couple of other callers joined in, and it was a really good, fun afternoon session. We got some children involved in planting the trees, so hopefully in 10, 15, 20 years' time, they'll walk past and look at those trees and think, you know, I did that, have a little bit of ownership of it, and, you know, be very proud. And all in all, you know, a good project, well delivered, and the feedback we got on the day was fantastic. I wanted to go, I was invited to go to a uh, Lego event, you know, the Falcon was sad, and I do genuinely mean sadly. I was away, so uh, Councillor Parrish has attended on my behalf. So, yeah, I, must, I must say that Lego has been my thing in the past, apart from occasionally making it with the children, but I was absolutely blown away by the, the, the skill and the dedication on the show. You know, I, I didn't really even know what it was going to be there, but um. Some of the Lego models that these people have made is it's just astonishing, and I think it's ignited quite a lot of fires. I've talked to people since, you know, who are now saying, oh, I'm definitely getting Lego into Lego again, and I'm going to join the Lego community myself. So, yeah, really good. Yeah, thank you for joining on my behalf. Um, yeah, and other than that, but just a note to say, obviously, the Storm Tower opening has now been booked for the 26th, hopefully. The weather will allow us to go ahead, and um, we got there, Frankie. Well done. Thanks. All right, that's saying it's the uh, almost all right. Well, <laughs> we would have been there, <laughs> and that's the end of my report. Formal councillors' report. You're the only one here. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, I didn't give you a comment on the councillor, Chokak, and councillor. I, I think it's a short thing. Tilly, I forgot what he was called. Yeah, yeah. 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 Not, not legally yeah. quite, but I'm totally sure. Thank you. I'll make it as quick as I possibly can. Uh, happy to take questions after. Um, uh, probably the most important thing that Gorn Council has been focusing on over the last couple of meetings, uh, both in committee and at full council, has been the council budget, which has gone up by the maximum it possibly can do 4.99%. Um, some of the interesting things that discussions that I've been having have been saying, asking questions of our financial officers saying, even at 4.99%, is that enough to keep us a viable organization? And they're shaking their heads sadly and saying, no, it's not. Uh, because obviously 4.99 is the maximum by law that we can. Um, but there are so many unexpected and unplanned pressures coming in um, from adult social care, school transport, extra needs, lots of, lots of unexpected inflation in costs of providing the social care that the council um, is, is obliged to do um, is, is causing a lot of the um, sums just not to simply add up anymore. Um, and as it stands, unless there's a significant change in the way that um, national government responds to um, the need for providing funding and sensible funding for local government, we're looking at a cliff edge coming because we're already taking from reserves to prop up our budget. 
um, and the cliff edge is really not more than two or three years away before the council probably will be looking at one of these notices that you hear other councils talking about where they effectively go bankrupt and have to go into special measures. Um, at the moment, I think you've, you've just got to Birmingham City Council announcing a 20% increase on their precept, well not precept, their council tax, um, and also at the same time cutting back massively on the services that they deliver. And I think that that is not impossible to start thinking it could happen here as well in a couple of years' time. So um, it's not a good situation at the moment, financially wise. More pertinent to Bude, um, Rods Bridge, I don't think we talked about Rods Bridge here, but Rods Bridge is currently closed. Uh, the bridge was condemned, it was found to have been damaged on the underside, more so than, uh, than the county engineers had recognised. Um, I didn't realise this, but sometime in the last 10 or 15 years, it had been reinforced with an RSJ being placed underneath it, which had reduced the, uh, the top of the wall, the head route to the bridge to, uh, I think, slightly less than three foot. So if you attempt to go underneath it on a paddleboard or a rowboat, it's almost impossible unless you're live probe. Um, I've been lobbying very hard to try to get a lift bridge or a movable bridge considered. Uh, Mr. Thomas is aware that I attended a meeting uh, with uh, Ray Alexander, the inland chairman of the Inland Waterways Association, who presented some ideas and some funding as well. I mean, the early conversations that we're having with the Cornwall Council engineers are it's just not going to be feasible to do that under any circumstance. I wish it was. I wish I could give you a better answer. The only thing that I've managed to do is I've pushed them very, very hard to extend the budgets to get the deck height raised as much as it possibly can be. Um, and also that the deck that is put into the bridge will be a lightweight deck that could be perhaps removed and changed into a movable bridge at some point in the future. And at the moment, I'm hoping to get a five foot clearance from water to bottom of the bridge, which would make the waterway somewhat navigable but not as navigable by the folks that perhaps we are hoping might be able to use it. Um, but it's certainly an improvement on the starting point. Uh, dredging, I think we've probably pretty much done. Um, I can say after the chat that I have with the site foreman this afternoon that they are intending on moving the dredging machinery into the main harbour basin sometime next week. So they'll have completed the upper basin um, by the end of next week and, and move over. Um, you quite rightly point out that it, it hasn't been a success of actually getting rid of the spoil or the dredgings of it um, as, as much as we might, but that's more down to weather than bad planning. It's just one of those things. Um, I'm attending a, a meeting tomorrow, quite interesting for me. It's, it's a cool um, nuclear airport. Um, at the moment, the, the administration has got plans to actually sell off the airport. And I'm in two minds as to whether or not that's a good idea, because I think having an airport in Cornwall is probably quite good for our economic um, viability for bringing travel connections. I know Catherine Good has talked about this before in, in terms of the sort of people that might want to visit her business um, would use that sort of facility and the reliability of year round connections, I think is quite an important thing for us. So I'm, I'm, I'll have more to report on next time around with that, but I'm, I'm not keen on the idea of selling it off, if I'm honest. One thing I want to just happen on very quickly, um, the Surf Life Saving Club down at Crooklets is connected across the little stream at the bottom there, it's probably got a name, I don't know what it is, by a wooden footbridge. The wooden footbridge has been not quite condemned, because it was condemned it would be closed, it's not closed, but it needs replacing. And um, the Cormac engineers have come up with a grand plan to replace it with a recycled plastic bridge, um, which is GRP coated to make it look like wood. Um, I've consulted with a couple of people um, down there, in, very informally, um, the chairman of the Surf Life Saving Club, James Sermon, and also Martin Dory, previous councillor who's interested in plastics, basically would come back to me and said, we really would prefer not to have a plastic bridge there. So I'm lobbying very, very hard uh, for Cornwall Council not to give us a trial plastic bridge in that position, because I just don't think it fits with our community. And that is the end of my talk. I'm happy to take questions. Uh, how is these bus pontoons to be printed? Well, it's either Cornwall Council or go Cornwall. I think it's probably going to be Cornwall Council, but I mean, was there, is there a problem with it? Well, I don't think you need to print the points actually it's free and you deal. I mean, you're on about Cornwall Council, but the, the white bank money, they waste the scatters. Yeah. I mean, right. this one was for, from September the 3rd 
23. Yeah. This one was from the 29th of October. I mean, he printed this one, what, for six weeks? Yeah. Um, well, they should be printed quarterly because that's the bus um, revision timetable. I mean, yeah, but I mean, does it need to be so much glossy magazine? It could be just a simple bit of paper. I'll feed that back. You can get them online on the UTRC website. So you go online. Yeah, you're trying to be clever. Would you also do me a favour, Peter? I don't know who they are. Emmy, Emma, Frankie, and the Cornwall Housing team. Do you know them? No. Ah, right. Well, because they sent me three letters, all about fit thing being the same thing. Yeah. Who yeah. paid who paid three lots of council tax and the registered three times over, maybe. I should have to get the money there wasted. It's like a corn box. It says return to Cornwall Council, it says Cornwall Council, Cornwall House. Is this Cornwall Council? I can't see from that. Maybe you'd be good enough to leave me one of those. Well, I was going to give out. you three, to be honest. What one of those? <laughs> Is that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, could I ask a question? Please? Go on in. Yeah. Any idea when Wards Bridge is likely to be open at some point? Currently, no. They're planning it to be delivered, or the works to be delivered um, in the autumn phase. So September to December. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's not something that's going to be built overnight. And if they're going to raise the bridge height to what I'd like them to, is to obviously push it to the maximum, it's going to need a lot more work doing than just the light like, like replacement. So, it, but it should, uh, there is funding in place for it and it should happen by the end of this year. Okay. All right, minutes for council to approve the minutes of the meeting held on 1st of February 24 and the extraordinary meeting held on the 8th of February 2024. I propose we do that. All in favour? Against? Abstain? Committees to receive and note the minutes of the committee meetings. The planning committee, 14th and 28th of February 2024. All in favour? Against? Abstain? Culture and Heritage Committee, 8th of February 2024. Proposed to do that. All in favour? Against? Abstain? And Corporate and Democratic Committee, 22nd of February 2024. I'll propose to do that. Seconded. All in favour? Against? Abstain. Okay. Recommendations from the Corporate and Democratic Committee, I'll go through these one at a time, to adopt the transparency policy. I'm not going to ask if you've already seen it. Does anybody want to say anything about this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, just adopted perhaps with the amendment for the fourth letter on the second paragraph. This should be yeah. words, sorry, on the second paragraph should be brief. And we want to second that. Okay, you move over. Okay, that's fair. The London Bridge Pro Stop. Any queries, thoughts, comments? This is what basically what happens if the uh, mark seems to be for those that think about that. There you go. I'll step in that. All in favour? Not a brief. Not up to us, really, is it? <laughs> Against? Yeah. Abstain? Uh, but the social media policy. You got something to say, Peter? 
And I, I want to apologise because I know our office put lots of work into this, there, but uh, it's still problematic for me. And I've spoken against it several times before. But the opening paragraph, or the paragraph three, where it says rules for using social media, all members, including staff and councillors, must engage with social media in a manner that reflects the council's values and objectives. Well, what if I, I'm not bound to agree with the council's position? And, and, and I feel that I would retain the right to object to a position the council took. I understand what vicarious liability is very well, and that we all own collectively decisions that are made, but I would, I can't imagine it would ever happen, to be quite honest, but I reserve the right not to agree with you lot. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Philosophically, I can't argue with Peter. In fact, I also spoke against this policy or indeed the need to have any policy. But there's also practicalities. If officers of the council are expected to behave in a particular way, then we as members of the council should not be free to diverge wholly and completely from that. I think if we're holding salary people to account, we need also to hold ourselves to account. So although my heart is with people, my, my head is probably being swayed more towards the need to have a policy. But then it's the case of, of what happens if there is a potential breach of it, Will members get a fair hearing, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And and looking at this policy, I think that it probably would. I mean, you know, without deliberately setting out to break the policy to have a hearing to find out, I don't suppose we'll ever know. But officers have spent quite a bit of time on this, and I'm no longer minded just to to, to boot it back into the world of us. I think at some point. Something has to be accepted, and this is about as good as it can get. Um, Katie and then Amanda. Um, I do have a question, and I've sort of been trying to think it over in my mind about whether it's whether I'm just being silly or not. But there's so it says uh, all interactions on social media platforms must be respectful, constructive, and free from derogatory, discriminatory, defamatory, or offensive language. Are we talking just in terms of having a conversation with somebody else? Like if you are responding to somebody's post. My example is that at Christmas, just gone, I, as part of my job as an artist, designed some Christmas cards that might not have been to everybody's taste. It did have some naughty words on it, and I posted them on my business's social media, and they were shared around, and people could come to my market store and see these cards with these naughty words on. Um, Where would people stand with I, that? Personally, I think if you were doing something like that as part of your business, that would not be associated with you speaking as a counsellor, would be my interpretation of that. Uh, I'm not a rules that. lawyer, the people that know the rules better than me is fair, but that would be my interpretation of that as it has written. So, I mean, in an ideal world, it's quite useful for members to have two online accounts, so the personal one and the councillor one, and then that makes life much easier because you, you're quite clear as to what you're posting on to better business or about council matters. So, I mean, that's another way of approaching it, but I don't think even if you were commanded for promoting your business, no. Okay. No, thank you. I'm sorry, it was Amanda next, then Tom. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with what Kevin said, I would say. Um, I, when I read this document, I didn't take from it that it was expecting us not to speak out if we didn't agree with something that was going on in the council, as in generally. Um, I take it as so that it reflects the council's values and objectives. That's to me. That's not saying it's not. It's not a narrow thing. It's a very broad 
as a council, we are listening to the community and we are acting in their best interests. And to me, that's our values and objectives, and there's nothing wrong with being in line with that. I don't see the problem in doing it to my It's not expecting us not to have a voice or an opinion. I don't see that written anywhere. Yeah, I think I, yeah. Um... I think we can disagree with each other individually, as we do in Jira around the case, but we have to do that online in a reasonably simple manner. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't interpret that as no. falling foul of the rules. No. But it would, uh, yeah. But if you did that with staff online, I would interpret that as falling foul of the rules. Mm -hmm. And that has to be the difference. I don't know what anybody else thinks, but. Um, Tom. Uh, Council Chair, but it's for how he's going to sit, so I'll leave it at that. Okay. So can I ask you a question? If, um, if the Council made a, a decision, so we come to a resolution, which one of us didn't agree with, and we went onto our social media and said, I don't agree with that decision, would you say that that was reflecting the council's objectives, or would you say that that was opposing the council's objectives? I think that's that's the nub of what Peter's trying to say. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's not about being rude to people. It's not about being using swear words or anything else. No, the word it's, objectives is, is about you know what this council resolves and, and whether we agree. Yeah, this, yeah, I'll see this. Yeah, this one that I agree with. Decisions I agree with, decisions I don't agree with. I mean, so it's, yeah, it's a very fine line in the wording there. Um, I mean, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not the arbiter of all things social media policy. Can I ask Tassie Yeah. What's your view on the council when it's on their social media and said, I don't agree with, with the resolution that's come before council? Yeah, I think that would be the yeah, I mean, I think it's going to depend very much on the circumstances and, and you know, how it's expressed. And whether or not it's actually bringing council into what's reviewed, which obviously would then be an issue in terms of the code of conduct as well. So, I mean, I don't want to say it's a bit of a grey area, but I think the intent is to promote a positive image of council. That's, that's really what we're trying to work out. If I could also just add one other before I say that some. Uh, obviously, this has been back as important to the community as well a few times. Um, and Councillor Hannah was actually asked to meet with them, um, asked to go away and, and make some amendments, which he has done. So that, that to his amendments are incorporated in the So has had some member input as well and been approved by the committee for recommendation. Yeah. Could the pub, member of the public say something about this? Yes. Thank you. Ah, I don't know what detail you people are looking at. I haven't seen it. But to me, there is a very, very important principle being looked at here, and that is democracy. Now, as far as I am concerned, in my view, you, every one of you, are our representatives. You're, you're not here as a, a power above us. You are representatives. Just a couple of things that I've written down. I totally agree that when you present yourselves on social media, you should be respectful. That's fine. No problem at all with that. I believe we live in a democracy, not a dictatorship. And, and it sounds to me a little bit as if what you are suggesting that you will adopt is prone to dictatorship more than democracy, which I'm not very happy with. Um, this isn't a Chinese version of authority. This is Britain. You know, we're, we're allowed to disagree. We're allowed to take a different view. Two accounts, you mentioned social media accounts. I think that was a very good idea. And the last thing that word that struck me was objectives. I think if any single one of you disagrees with an objective of this authority, you should be allowed to make that known without penalty. Because you, you know, I, I, I would assume you're doing it for a good reason. So don't sign away your rights to 
democratic ability is, it is, it is what it is, I would say as a member of the public. It does walk the line of free speech, which was discussed while it was in the committee. And yeah, I am an advocate of free speech at the end of the day, but at the same time, you know, there are examples where a social media policy would have been kept staff, for example. And well, I can understand it's a minefield, but I, I'm just yeah. conscious of, of, you know, there's a, an undertone here I'm not too happy about as a member of the public. Amanda, and then Tom. So, objective seems to be the sticking point. Well, just thinking that, yeah. So it's just to reflect the council's values. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I, I don't think this policy restricts us or prevents us from expressing mm. our opinions. No. Mm. If it's done in the right way, mm. it, you'll be fine. What we're mm. trying to do is to ensure that we do express those opinions agreeably, even if we're disagreeing, so to speak. Yeah. I absolutely agree with the concept of expressing opinions. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, there's, there's no point in us being here if you're. You're not going to. No. Uh, Katie, I think it's it's really just um, just common sense, is it not? Just you know, if you're going to have an opinion, it's quite easy. I mean, even when I'm just talking to people, people say, "Oh, you know, is that the council's opinion or is that your opinion?" And I say, "That's my opinion. That's my personal opinion." We're not just councillors; we're members of this community and this town. We're all here because we have different opinions and different thoughts and different ideas and we're here representing different sections of the community to have something that may restrict us in being able to support specific people or specific ideas uh, it does, I do feel a little restricted I think as long as you do it with with compassion and understanding and without being you know nasty or saying you know things that aren't acceptable then having a discussion online and, and sharing your opinions is you know I I would worry that I would then worry about going online and getting involved in a conversation with somebody in case my opinions were then misconstrued or somebody might have said well I, actually no you, you said that that was council's opinion or that you know and there would be constant sort of, I think a lot of things could happen as a result of that if people misconstrue things. So I would worry more about speaking online about things that I'm passionate about or just in case I say the wrong thing and somebody says, oh, well, you know. Yeah. Um, the question then becomes who decides what's offensive for the men different things are offensive to different people, which is entirely the problem in the conversation, whether it's in the workplace, in a pub, a restaurant, or online. I think there's Somebody there are... over here, you say something, take it out of context, and you know, we've all seen the TikTok videos online, of people getting uber offended in gyms and whatnot, and yeah. There, there is things that are obviously offensive, you know, using swear words, being racist, being sexist, being homophobic, those things are obvious and, in, and, and I can't see anyone around this table who I believe would, would do or say anything like that against anyone online or in person. And I think as long as you're avoiding that and you are just forcing your opinion, I don't, yeah, I no, think. I, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I, 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 I personally, yeah, I've argued against a couple of bits in this, but there isn't anything that stopped me saying what I wanted to say. Because I know that I'm not going to say anything. You know, I might, I might use a term like Kevin, you know, as mentioned before, the term anarchist people right or right up, but, you know, if it's used to describe a group of people on holiday, it's not really offensive if you added a stream of expletives before it and targeted at an individual contextually, that would be offensive. But yeah, so I figure you would go 
I'll make it very, very simply because I know I've already spoken once, but we're all bound by the code of conduct. Yeah. And I think that covers everything. Yeah. So I don't see the need for this policy. It just creates a layer of confusion, if I'm quite honest. Oh, okay. Um, we're going to need to propose something at some point. Vicky, and then I'll let Ian speak. Firstly, unfortunately, nowadays you have to have a policy for everything. Um, that is the modern way. I would say that in this policy, 3B, where it says representative patient or clarity, where it says that, you know, your opinion, you try and make it clear that it is your opinion and not that the council's, um, is fair. And as the current, I'm going to say, I'm going to say it, that you have your own Facebook account and possibly a council one. Um, and I would suggest that perhaps we approve this with a trial of a year and perhaps reassess it at the end of the year to see if it has met what we expect it to do. Is that suggestion a proposed? Well, I propose then. Sure. I propose that we accept this with a trial of a year and at the end of the year we review it to see if there have been any incidents that need anything rewritten in it. Okay. It is up for review next March anyway. <laughs> 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 okay. Are we are we gonna take what objectives out just before we go to that moment? Can I just quickly it, it, hopefully it casts a little bit more light on 3A in terms of what is quite a nuanced paragraph. I think the second sentence in that paragraph throws more light potentially on the first. And that there's a distinction between somebody on social media, a councillor on social media saying, I think the decision to spend X amount of money planting trees was a stupid idea. And a councillor saying, I think the facilities team are a bunch of wasters and they never pull their finger out. That's a difference between having a go and not presenting a positive view of the council services and your democratic right to say that that money was wasted. That's a difference. There's a yeah, distinction that's, yeah, that's, there. Yeah. That's what those two sentences are talking that's, about. That's what I was getting at when I said, if you disagree with the council or a council decision, I wouldn't see it as problematic. If you targeted the staff that carried out a decision we made, I would very much see it as problematic. Right. So the question is, are we going to amend that remove objectives or are you willing to accept that amendment or not? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to be clear, we're voting on this policy with the word objectives moved from paragraph 3A, all in favour. Again, uh, yeah, it's against against. May I please have my vote recorded? You may indeed. You can record the vote, please. Against, yeah? Yeah. And abstain. Two, okay. Ooh, I've lost my thing. There it is. Go on. If now I remind members to request the recorded vote beforehand, I know you're just asking for your. Yeah, all right. Well, so on a clarification, you can request for your vote to be recorded after the vote. But if you require a recorded vote, that is for all councillors, yes. then it must happen before the vote is taken. Right. So I think that's so, correct in the procedure. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> um, social media policy. Flag buying profile proposed amendment shall be able to be a category A flag only. I'll go right off the bat. Can you record this vote, please? <laughs> Kevin. Um, actually, before I come to Kevin, I am just going to say a little bit. We have done about four hours on this now. We've bounced it in and out of committees a couple of times. We've done an hour at full council. So we've got a lot to get through. So what I'm going to suggest is that we all have our say and then we start testing this with votes because that's the only way this is ever going across the line. Otherwise, we'll be sat here all night 
rehashing the same arguments that we've rehashed several times already. I know not everybody's in the committee, but we've, we've done it a lot. So I'll give everybody one opportunity to speak. If you've got something to say, make sure you get it in. And then we're going to go. Um, since Kevin has his hand up first, we'll start with Kevin and go anti clockwise. One of the most significant things I've done since um, I've been a member of this council was to speak at Youth Pride last year. And also to hold the very large flag that we carried from the triangle down to the castle. And I must admit that I have flip flopped on this issue like I've flip flopped on no other issue that's been around this table. When I was initially co opted, I was of the opinion that flying the flag was probably a diversive act, not an inclusive act. But I was persuaded by arguments, not least by members of the LGBTQ community that it was an important gesture to make and that flying it from all poles was an important thing to do and it would be a terrible counter gesture to bring it down. So I moved my position. And then we found that elements within the armed forces community, sincere elements within the armed forces community, found it very difficult to have two flags flying from the same pole and they wished to see the Union flag alone and I accepted that position and what we had last year when the flag went up for Pride Month and came back down to certain days and we had the Union flag flying alone on certain days I thought that was a, a good compromise and a compromise worth fighting for. But what happened to this town last year in terms of how it was dragged through the mud on certain parts of social media? You can even Google to this day views and flags and you get all sorts of stuff from all over the world from there. And when Mike talked about his kids at school being targeted for what we were doing in terms of that flag box. I just don't think that we can continue like it. And I would love it if our compromise of the hokey coaching with the flags going up and coming back down satisfied people. I would shake everybody by the hand and find a clean tea, but it isn't going to satisfy people. We are going to have this again and again and again. So with an exceptionally heavy heart, and knowing that my wife is in heaven or somewhere else throwing thunderbolts at me or saying this, I believe that uh, the flag on Shoulder Hill should now, to save arguments, be designated Category A or not. Seconds, then I'll write this right in the notes. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think the policy has presented is a significant improvement on the previous version I was presented. Um, uh, I'm mildly positive about that. Uh, I disagree that uh, we need to make sure that Hill uh, an exclusive uh, platform for category A. Um, and that's basically my position. Okay. If, Amanda, if you just put your hand up when you're ready, I'll keep going until then. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, Luke? Uh, yeah, I think I don't agree that we should just divide it because some people have an argument. I think it should be a request that we consider it. Um, I also have kind of gone back and forth as these different people and different opinions. And, yeah, I don't think we should be considering it. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the the policy in the whole is acceptable, but the proposed amendment to yeah designate Shoulder Hill to be category A flag only is deeply unacceptable to me, and that's something I feel really strongly about. And yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. I'm concerned enough about it. Um, I think it's unfortunate that flag's policy. Is defined or is seems to turn into how you dress in your flag. It's taken over the policy. It, unless yeah. you have meant to be derogatory. But I, I think it's important that we've been up in this situation. And it, as the proposer of the amendment, that uh, I'm sure that it should be. Well, actually, I suppose that it should be flag the same color and, and agree with that totally, but it's a yes. So it's already a compromise to it to uh, form that to category A flags, but uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I would uh, the support of the policy, the protocol with the amendment the touch on the hill to be category, not part order of the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so I think, well, to be blunt, I think Cambridge would solve a lot of the problems that uh, were raised by members of the public. We do feel somewhat annoyed about uh, <laughs> certain flags being flown. I think it should be just, as Tom said, like some plumes or even the flag or, in the wider sense, Cambridge A's. I personally would go one step further and would say that it should not just be a member of the public may ask for a flag to be flown or an organisation. It should only be groups or individuals who hire the council premises. And the only two flagpoles which are to be used would be the castle and the parking centre. As I've said at the previous meeting, uh, for example, if cats protection wanted to hire the parking centre, they could fly their flag. There's no way problem that. If the uh, RMI for lifeboat weekend fly the RMI flag at the castle, and same as any other group or organisation that might require um, the council premises, I don't think the poll should be used uh, for just generally any member of the public at any time. Just it makes things a bit simpler. And also on page four of the policy, it does say. That one of the bullet points, the town council will need to make an application for planning consent if, if the request is submitted. Uh, it should not be that, it should be the, the person who wants to have the flag box should make the application, it should be officer's time to do it. I know that the third bullet point of the cost of making the application uh, would be paid for by the but at the same time, it's still officer time. So it's not ready to make a, a proposal, but I'm Kevin has spoken very eloquently on this, um, so I have very little to add. Um, in an ideal world, we shouldn't be having this sort of thing um, happening, but unfortunately, we are. I just feel that going for category A will actually free up officer time because there is then a, serious, a protocol established. And um, just out of interest, it's the only flagpole that has locked access to it. Mm. Okay. Maybe. Um, I think the protocol as it is is fine without the amendment. I think it, we still need to be, you know, fair and equal to to everyone and yeah that's that's all thank you oh sorry i didn't see that <laughs> nice. um i'm just encouraging katie to go ahead so um i think the um the document's fine for um for that reason okay uh thank you the Amendment isn't going to stop anybody from still petitioning, still lobbying, still going to press, etc. 
Um, and I think that's ultimately because there's obviously members of our community that don't feel like they're included by St. Jerome's flag or um, the, the, the English flag, etc. So, like, we're always going to be having to battle regardless, even if you have the amendment, because there's going to be certain days where um, someone might think, you know, maybe on some parents' days something happens to the monarch, and then suddenly we have to swap it, and there's going to be people, you know, in Cornwall who's stronger about being Cornish, and it's suddenly you know, we have to take down some parents' flag on some parents' day. So that won't be great. So I, I don't think we are um, should have that amendment. To be honest, yeah. I also believe the Office of Times is, is a very good, which is a good point. <clears throat> Okay, Jackie? I'm not going very much ahead. I um, just think it's sad that it's become so contentious and sad that we're backtracking on that sort of previous position of inclusion and acceptance, but I understand the need for compromise. So I don't really have too much to do yeah, yeah, nice. <coughs> that. compromise last year. I my life would have been infinitely better, I think, so a lot of other people. But, um, Lorraine? Um, I'm sick and tired of the arguing, but I think in my head it is to, I know that the flagpole isn't for Shalda Hill, but I see it as it is, because it was because it's the proposition of it, I would like to see the Union Jack with Mamie and St. Perrins up there as well. Okay. Yeah. I will let my vote speak for me. Just a little bit of levity and serious. Um, quite cool. You're going to jump in front of the man. Oh, I will. If you want to go first, I'll go first. Yeah, I'll try to bang around over this. It's as I addressed in my in the statement I gave last year, it's how something we did with such good intentions has has been as as, as Kevin put has led to the town's reputation being tarnished. <laughs> globally as it was is just beyond me absolutely beyond me i mean we get complaints about things from time to time i have had more complaints about the way this town's reputation was damaged in the media than i have had about any other issue added together and that says a lot it um, and Unfortunately, I mean, we're, we're talking about the flag policy, but we're, we're talking about both. The damage done, not just to this community, but to the members of the, the demographic that you pride were meant to be representing when they went to the media, is, is for me the saddest thing to come out of my time as a councillor. It, and yeah, we're sat here now, and it's We've got, we've got, ultimately, we've got to make a decision. I'll go to Amanda and then I'll go to I'll let Richard have his say, and then we're just going to have to test into the vote. Um, we're going to have to live with what we do, and hopefully, this year, people will, whatever we decide, people will be a little bit more reasonable in their reaction to it. Because, you know, as I've, you know, as I've mentioned before, my kids ended up being bullied. Um, when I said, can talk to your teacher, they said, Dad, my, one of them turned around to the dad, my teacher's the person who put the comments out. And that broke me, and it broke my wife. And we still have to this day that child, when he met, when he when he messes around with school, he said, well, What are you talking to? I don't trust them. That's the answer he gives. And that is the impact that these decisions can have. So 
Yeah, I'll let Amanda speak and then we're going to have to vote and we're going to have to own what we do. Well, I apologise now because I've been scribbling over literally all over my page in notes of your order. So, yeah. Um, it, it, I'll keep it as short as I can. Okay. Um, and it's about how the last couple of years have been really tough. Um, I myself was targeted, ended up having police involvement and everything. So I get, I get what a contentious issue this is firsthand. What I don't like is going backwards. You know, I think we've done something really progressive. We've held our heads up above the parapet there, and it's not easy to do as an organisation, but it's absolutely the right thing to do. I still believe that with every single part of me. You know, you look nationally across the country and it was absolutely fine. There was nothing wrong with buying that flag anywhere. You know, whether it's a hill with a war memorial on it, it doesn't actually matter. You know, it doesn't, there is no offence. There is no, there is nothing bad about it. Um, the RBL obviously were involved a lot when I was there and they themselves said, they themselves as an organisation said, there was absolutely nothing wrong with buying that flag from that flag pole. So for me, what we're doing is we're making a decision, we're going back on a decision based on individuals from our own community, their opinion, rather than looking wider than that, and looking at the country and what is the norm now, actually. What is the national, you know, the organisation's guidance? They said it's okay. I, um, I would say that the point about saving officers' time is absolutely valid. But if we've got a robust policy in place, which says, and we voted on it to say we can fly any flag from any of our flagpoles with the um, part in about obviously taking it down for you know, memorial services. Isn't, isn't like that, that what caused the problem? Then? <coughs> the, I watched the video yeah. of the apology we issued. Because obviously I, I didn't think we need to be a policy, and I asked the question, why why did? Because obviously I was the target this time, and I know you were targeted before, so you know, we both been targeted by this <laughs> issue. And I asked the question, why did having three flags for one day upset so many people? It was actually you that answered, mm. and you said it was the symbolism of lowering the flag that sure. caused the outrage, yeah. and that changed me, and I that changed me to voting to say sorry. Yeah. Are you now suggesting that it is fine to lower the flag three times this year? No. And that I won't be on the wrong end of everything this time? No, because you are always going to have people that aren't happy with that. But we consulted the organisations. We had some from the it military. Wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't the military that caused the problem, Amanda. It was you, you pride. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand that. Yeah, they were the ones that kicked off about us lowering it. Yes, and I understand that. You're, you're never, you are always going to have people that are not happy with that part of it. And I can see the problem in lowering the flag, the symbolism of that. I can see why that I offended them, yeah. upset them. And I feel like the whole process was just done, you know, could have been done better, I would say, as far as consulting. Maybe they were never going to be happy with that. But we as a council have to come to, we were talking about, um, What's the word? Um, yes, thank you. Yeah. A compromise. Sure. For me, that was the compromise. That was because somebody from the military organisation that I contacted, the inclusivity department, yeah. they said, as a military person myself, I would want any other flag to be lowered so that they can salute just the Union Jack. And I came into the council meeting and I said, that is what I've been advised. But they are, that's not, that doesn't mean people are going to be automatically happy with that. Yeah, I, we have to my, understand question, that. my question was, why was that such a hard compromise for effectively Sammy Dodds and Hugh Pride? Why was that something that educates children and able to make that compromise? Yeah, for I mean, one we can't day? obviously speak as somebody that is a Well, I can. So <laughs> I, I think, you know, what we're talking about here is going backwards completely and removing the ability yeah. to put that flag up, which I don't think is right. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll test it with us. But yeah, as for, I have no issues with calling him out for what he did to my family. <laughs> um, Richard. I mean, you know, being like, can I raise point of order there? That that is 
like defamatory and sort of okay. like that's un fine. genuinely that's unacceptable to me. Okay. But you can ask members of the public to refrain from using specific language, but then I, 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 I didn't, I, I said name check that. people. I just think it's it's really inappropriate. We're trying to like come to a decision in a really meaningful way for the whole okay. community and make it really personal. I think it's inappropriate. Okay. okay, well, it's a personal limit, but point of order, no, Richard. Thank you, Michael. Um, this has been a horrible, horrible issue for this town. Mm -hmm. Disgraceful, in my view. Um, I'm going to say a few things about it. Several of you have mentioned that you've been targeted. I've been targeted too in relation to this, strangely enough, mm -hmm. because I do believe that only the Union flag or the St. Perrin flag should be on Shelby Hill. That's my personal view. Now, having been called a homophobe and worse, my interest as a homophobe was so taken with this that I approached a couple of uh, members of the LGBTQ plus community who live in this town, who I know extremely well, have known them since they were born. Both have relationships with members of the opposite sex and both felt that they could not support the fact, make it known, they supported the fact that only the St. Perrin flag or the Union flag should fly at Shelter Hill. They lived in fear in this town where they lived, where they did all their lives of making that opinion known because it would in their mind, encourage backlash from the LGBTQ plus community and the supporters as, as things were being voiced at that time. Um, so, so that was me approaching friends of mine from that community. Uh, as Michael said, the perceptive press that was made about this was a disgrace an absolute disgrace, including from one in particular, which upset me, an ex-member of this council. What he said, I, I regard as completely false and uh, not supported by any evidence. I'm also such a homophobe that when a gentleman, uh, a person flew a pride flag independently from Shoulder Hill, I went up and had a chat with him for about three quarters of an hour just to get his perspective and my overwhelming impression when I came away from that was not about inclusivity it was about not being able to get the way that person wanted and in particular um, the term was used um, I hate the chairman of the local world rich legion now, anybody who doubts that, I've got a recording of the complete conversation. So don't take my word. And somebody mentioned about requesting flags to fly. I could request on behalf of my children, um, part of their family heritage is Jewish. Now, I suspect it wouldn't go down too well in a lot of quarters if I asked for the flag of Israel to be flown at Shoulder Hill <coughs> now or any time in the future, but it's a category A flag. Okay, now I won't ask for that, I wouldn't ask for that, but I have every right to, just as anybody else with an interest could ask for their flag to be flown. Um, I think the whole issue is coming here. Um, if you're going to be fair to everyone, I, the only outcome I can see without you people having to go over this time and time and time again with the division it brings, not inclusivity, but the division it brings to this town, is to just say, leave that flag as the union flag or St. Premier flag. And um, I'm really sorry that I've had to go on about this, but that's a view of a member of the public. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we're going to have to. Um tested for the votes now, so we may as well start with it as is. I think I can see where it's going, but and then we'll discuss what we're going to vote on next. So I will propose that we 
do the fire planning protocol with the amendment to see what happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I speak now? I just want to test procedure because we're effectively being given a polarised choice here. It's either the document or the document with a proposed amendment, which is category A flags. Or we're going to have to come up with something else. It's neither here. Right, right, yeah. right. But what I have heard around this table is union flag, else appearance flag, yeah. which is the third option, which I'd quite like to have a vote on. But I don't quite know about the correct procedure to. But that well, is, would it be a? We're just going to have to test stuff with. So, it's twenty past seven, and honestly, yeah. we got to play. Yeah, no, no, you've got to presentation to get through. We, we've actually got item eleven. We've got to get decided. Would it be so that you would take sorry the proposed amendment first, and, and if that fails, then we come up with another proposed amendment. Yeah. I you may. Procedurally. Okay, so this is the agenda item to this to decide on this um, policy with the amendment proposal. So there's a further amendment from this put forward at this meeting. I'd like to take that first. So if there's an amendment that's proposed and seconded to um, to make sure we've got a um, union and um, to flag only um, fight, then Okay, so you propose we change it to instead of category O only, union and state programs only. Yes. Are you seconding that? Oh, I was going to say that you, you as the original proposal, would have to agree to that change if you were. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, if you're, if you're seconding, mm -hmm. isn't it? I'll, I'll agree for that amendment. We'll test that one first if you yeah, want. That's what I was going to say. Okay, I still need somebody to second it so we can. Well, if you think that's it, if you agree yeah. that. Okay, so it is <laughs> the policy as written with the amendment that Shelter Hill is union flag and St. Currens only. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, that's suggested the process. It was, yeah. We, well, like I said, Tom, we danced it around. Yeah, we can take a bit of a in an interminable length of time. Right. Go. Yeah. So, all in favour. Nancy, I Six. Six. Okay, um, against. Yeah. Um, Hang on, wait, 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 Somebody would stay. Kevin's staying. You're flip topping in, Kevin. I'm not joking, mate. All right. Um, right. So, what are we going to do? Right on now. That's the original proposal. Yeah. Right. <laughs> With the amendment that it's category A only. Okay. Somebody's setting up these. Okay. It's all in favor. So, the original six plus Kevin. Okay. Six is speaking up. Yeah. Against. The same again. Same again, I think. Fly, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we don't need to die. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Right. We need somebody to propose something to vote on. Uh, I think procedurally it doesn't go back to committee. I fear you might be right, Tom, but 
<laughs> it's a recommendation from a committee. Yeah, it is yeah, a recommendation from a committee. Yeah. I can yeah. have yeah. 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 that committee. I'll do it again if you like. <laughs> Well, I mean, I was going to propose that we take the black wine protocol with the amendment that the person who was requesting the new planning commission actually wants to be I think that's in there, isn't it? I don't know, with the amendment, so with the amendment to whoever requested it. Well, yeah. you just maybe need to listen to Councillor O'Sullivan's point very carefully. On this. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's worth pointing out that when you come, so I've got, I've got a slightly different agenda to, to the rest of you, but when you come to the issue of deciding on the flag which is on this agenda, you are doing that on the basis of the flag line policy which currently stands because it hasn't been amended. Yeah, that could be a problem. Just pointing that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, is that the <laughs> Is this the proposition Do we need it? It's going to have to go back to committee. Yeah. Um, well, I'm being told that it's the proposition because we were taking the recommendation from our committee, so it's not been accepted. So it's where. <laughs> is that corporate and democratic? Is yeah, we're going to see it again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And if it doesn't win one, then you're going to be one mind. We're going to play ping pong with this. I'll come to Chris, then Tom, and then we're moving on with the agenda. Yeah, I'll just make the comment, Chairman. I thought you, um, Mr. Mayor, I thought you were going to resolve this tonight. Because, I was hoping you would. Yes, yeah. because. The way that it goes, you'll be going around in circles forever more. Be what will, I yeah. can make of it. Yeah, we will. It's, very, it's very simple to me. It's very simple to me. At the point of conception, we don't know what we're going to be. When we're born, we don't know what we're going to be. And as you grow older, you become aware of what you want to be. And there's nothing that anybody can do about that. So you should just all grow up. And accept it. Thank you, Chris. Um, Tom, yeah. you have your hand up. Yeah, I'll just respond to that and say actually, uh, I speak as one of the more upfront liberals here. I, if, and I think I'm, I'm uh, carrying on from what I said earlier. I'm very disappointed that this has turned into whether you are pro. Uh, um, you know, but we, you're almost touted as homophobic if you don't support a, a particular person. This is not how it should be. Yes, this is this entirely the problem, Tom. Yeah. yeah, and it, you know, we were discussing here the flag policy. Yeah. It probably wasn't mentioned in, in this in this motion. No. So why are we talking about whether you are, because we stretch people? Of, I can say that, Tom, there is only one organization that ever requests all four flag poles. So yeah. that we all know so that we will only ever have to discuss this when that organization invariably requests all four flag poles. I personally went and spoke to them and that said, well, you've got the right to have all four. How about a little compromise? Just have three, knowing that you've got the right to four for a couple of years. Until people get used to the idea, show that understanding, that empathy you ask for, and then put the fourth up. They didn't go without advice. Kevin also, I know, he, he, he emailed me. He went and had a conversation with them as well. He said, look, let's just do this slowly. It, it, it becomes a pride debate because there isn't another organization in this town that requests them for. Well, can I go back to my original suggestion? Uh, and this is going to sound a little bit facetious, but it isn't. Uh, could we defer this to the CMD committee meeting of May 2025? <laughs> 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 it, is a, it, it, it might sound um, facetious, but so that would leave us with current politics. Well, <laughs> well, it would mean that, that using the C word, um, uh, 
consultation. Yeah, we're going to, yeah, I'll stop the cake here and then we need to move on because honestly, we're halfway through a three hour meeting and the vote for consultation down a democratic election. And by May 2025, there will be another uh, contested election, well, hopefully, contested election. And to repeat what I said at the um, last CAG committee meeting, not one person raised the issue of flags with me on the doorsteps when I campaigned in 2020 now. And I believe I did more knocking on doors than anybody else here. Not once were, were flags mentioned. And this council has spent so much time discussing flags that nobody ever gets because of the I've got there is a speech to back each you are an expert to us, not if I'm um, so not sure we can advance it to 2025. For Katie, and then we're moving on. I just wanted to say, as someone who is part of the LGBT community, that I don't understand the need for having a flag. Many people, part of that community, have never felt like they belonged to any flag, and that the pride flag to them is a symbol of their belonging, it's a symbol of who they are. Many people have been, you know, bullied, attacked, murdered, killed by people who are, you know, of the same country as them. So to them, even their country flag does not feel like theirs. So I get that. I totally get that. On the other hand, and I've said this point before, I don't agree with how you pride reacted and dealt with the situation. And I feel like there was, you know, there was a lot of listening that should have been done, a lot less talking and a lot more listening, and a lot of learning can be done from this. And I, I would love the opportunity to sit and talk with, with members of youth private education and, and, and really understand what the issue was, because I think, you know, listening to, to, um, I can't remember the gentleman's name who came and, and spoke from Royal Bridge Legion, but um, Chief Petty Officer Hewitt. Yeah, he did. He, he, yeah. But listening to, you know, it it makes you realise that actually the union flag to them is as uh, is as important as the pride flag is to some members of the LGBT community. Mm. But it's about just understanding other people and not just thinking of yourself. I so want to be part of, you know, I want to be in a world where I don't have to, you know, oh, say to people, oh, I'm gay, or, you know, for my children to have to, you know, come out. I don't, I don't want a world of that. I want a world where we can all just be under one flag and be one. And I think they took massive steps back they in that. They scored a huge goal. Really segregated themselves. That's yeah. not the education that I want for my children as a gay woman. I don't, you know, so I just yeah. wanted to that, that, put, that, that put a different... The hardest thing to come out of it was they hey, the first few fights was such a success and you were so proud of how well it worked. And then that happened and they, they they alienated a lot of people that supported them, whether they were gay, straight, lesbian, or whatever. And it was just a huge young girl, and that's the saddest thing to come out of this. But we really do need to move on, so we're going to. No, Darky, I'm moving on, mate. Sorry. Are you moving on, Michael? That flag goes up. That's a declaration of war. Choose your words with care. They have been chosen. I've got plenty enough boards. You'll come up with it then. All right. Thank you, Darky. Calm yourself down, all right? We're moving on. The, the point you make, Mr. Chen, if I may, um, given that you have not now, as council, decided on a new policy, the fact that policy, you're um, effectively resolved to, to abide by the one that you've previously got, which will mean, because it states, um, that the union flag will fly alone on the armed forces weekend um, and D Day, because that's. And we're going to have to do it. it for the so it, well, it's going yeah. to be a repeat yeah. process. But also, it draws into question whether you need to make a decision. On item 11, because the backline policy as it currently exists 
already state mm. that those flags no, uh, we, the flag flag we safe. Needed it, it um, I, so I don't know what you do with that object right now. No, I'm well aware just putting that out. Yeah, it's yeah. Good, but yeah, I, I thought that one. Um, right, where am I? How? C and D, the officers. Yeah, he's requested. Officers be requested to investigate the possibility for the youth facilities project to be run on the fishing park building and funding sources to provide the revenue aspects for the project. I will talk very briefly on this for the people who weren't there. We were looking at the Crookless Toilets Beach office with the power exchange moving out of the fishing park building, where the beach offices need a lot of work to get them up to a standard to be a youth facility. They would be great if we could. We're now looking at the fish and buck building. We don't need anywhere near as much funding to get it. Pretty much, there are a few issues that I'm not going to go into, but we can pretty much have that up and running a hell of a lot quicker, a hell of a lot cheaper. And there is obviously the outside grass area, you know, the hand that used to be the old tennis sports, which could be used in the games, outdoor sports area, everything like that. So, effectively, we feel the officers should investigate that site for a youth facility. Because A, it will be cheaper, and B, it will be quicker, and C, it potentially could be a lot better. So of having kids running out onto a car park club and running out onto a nice grass area. So if anybody has any questions, myself or Frank, you can answer them. But if not, I propose we instruct them to get on with that. Right. Second, second. Yeah. All in favor. Yay. Um, and two, investigate the opportunity that ties in with a short term lease for the fish and pub facility for 2024 summer season on a commercial basis. But a follow on from what I just said, obviously, when with the power exchange leaving and us investigating that possibility, we have had one person or well, one set of people to express an interest in running the fish and pub this summer from that building. So it is effectively to open it up to them or others to run that bring some money in while we look at turning it into a youth facility in the future. Any questions? <laughs> I haven't proposed it yet. The fact <laughs> is, <laughs> I'll propose I'll it. All in favour? Fantastic. Uh, here we go. Another one. Um, consider future governance proposals for the town team and approve any associated actions. Right. Shall I introduce this one, Mr. Mayor? Yes, but I think the background. what I'm going to do, given I was pulled up in the review, or I wasn't mentioned in the review, I'm going to caution everybody to choose their words carefully. And leave it at that. Nice to be as much. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just as a bit of background, um, hopefully you've had a chance to look at the, uh, the timeline, which was amended. Apologies. Um, and so you've seen how this issue has progressed, but effectively what's happened is um, at the end of last year, the town team uh, decided that it would form a working group to propose um, a governance model for the town team going forward. And at the same time, the council went through a similar process. And you'll remember that we discussed a set of principles um, which were agreed at January for council. So uh, that is the, the council's position. Um, we've now received the proposed uh, governance model from uh, the town team. So your, your task here really is to uh, is to endorse it. Otherwise, um, those uh, proposals. Um, and just just to add that, that that this process is under the current terms of reference of the town team. This is the process that that we are expected to follow. That if there is a change to the constitution of the town team, um, that it puts forward that proposal to the council for its consideration um, one way or the other. So that, that is currently where you are, um, and hopefully you've had a chance to look at through the proposals and indeed remind yourself of the principles um, that the council has agreed in January. That's what I'll leave. Thank you. Can I be a point of order? Um, in January, we agreed that uh, we could get legal advice on the constitution that came forward to us. Um, now, I don't believe that we've actually had any legal advice on the constitution that's come through to us. So I think, I think really what we're doing tonight by discussing it is effectively we're, you know, we're disregarding the 
resolutions that we that we agreed to in January. So my feeling is that we should be not talking about this tonight. We should be waiting until we get the legal advice that we resolve that we need it. Yeah, I think we have brief discussions. I mean, I, I can't give an exact answer. Am I going to wear this? We need legal advice on a couple of issues. And we've got some thousand pounds in the budget this year for legal advice. Well, I don't think that makes any difference, really. Because I know it doesn't make any difference. We, so we would take yeah. the legal advice on the constitution that came for Yeah. It, yeah. And, so, you know, so that's that's my feeling is that that's what we should do. So we've got the constitution now and we should take the legal advice. Yeah, well, it is, yeah, we're going to have to. I mean, obviously, Fiona has. Have a look for it, but yeah, you know, if we have to hire an expert legal advice, we need to pay them, mm. and we set a budget that you know. I, mean, I don't know if anybody's ever hired lawyers, but two k doesn't give you a lot. So yeah, we can do it, but where are we getting the money? Kevin, um, like I say, well, this point, right? Yeah. We have a legal officer, and I know that you know the rules are very big beast, and you can be an expert in one part of it and, and not in another. But I think it would have been useful to have our legal officer's opinion on the on the proposals that, that the town team has put forward because she might find some, some glaring black holes or she might believe it to be water tight and lovely and good. Um my basic position on this has not changed. And I, it's not about the personalities. I know we can get ourselves into, into trouble talking about personalities and agendas and so on. And, it, and to me, it's got nothing to do with that. There are ways that this town can bring in money to itself that we traditionally have not gone down. You know, other parts of Cornwall have done far better than we've done at tapping into all kinds of other funding. And one of the reasons why they've been better is because they've been more nimble and quicker to set up things like the town team. So I applaud the fact that we have a town team. I applaud everybody from business and from the community groups and elsewhere that sit with them. But I'm also fundamentally a believer in democracy, we, we, we can have some philosophical debates about all sorts of things tonight. And people understand what the town council is. Mr. Jennings knows what happens. You know, there is a possibility of having a vote, and we may get voted out, we may get voted in, there may be a personalities around this table. It is easy for the people of this community to understand who we are and what we do. And it is much harder for them to get a handle on things like the town team. So we have to have a town team. We have to have, and it's a good thing we have it. And it's a good thing we have enthusiastic people who are coming up with blue sky thinking and seeking funding. But ultimately, at some point, that has to be done on the other side. Ultimately, they put in bids for funding and they hit an elected member, either an MP or a councillor or something, they, they get some kind of decision-making body. And I think it might as well be us. It might as well be us as the gatekeepers to what the town team progresses. So whatever form of governance the town team adopts with it, I believe that we should sit as a gatekeeper for town team's ideas going forward. And I, I, because that is easy for everybody to understand. And if we let projects through that then don't have community support, then more for us. I, I, I think that's the most transparent um, form of government, of governance rather, and, and I think that the, the current uh, proposals from the town team fall an awful long way short of that, and, and rather sideline this approach. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to respond to Kevin a bit, but okay. Well, I'm not as eloquent as Kevin at the speaker, so um, I've written some notes. 
Um, I think the consultation work was carried out last year, thanks to funding from Cornwall Council and the engagement with MPC Consultants was great. Um, I support the vision to improve the town centre and like the feedback received. And I'd like to see new projects come forward and enhance the town centre for residents. As Kevin's just what um, I've got two points, and um, one is around the desire expressed by the town team to have independence from the Strap and Town Council, while at the same time wanting our backing as an accountable body. And this seems incongruous to me. Um, I understand the desire to find balance between authority backing and flexibility, but I believe in order to provide backing, we need to have some oversight and influence. A representation is to be reduced from three votes to a single vote, and the town team will decide if our elected representative is acceptable. If a situation arises that makes us uncomfortable, we'll have no effective way of saying, hold on a minute, I don't think this is right. Uh, we're not saying that would, um, there would be anything that we disagree with, but to say that we could never, that would never happen would be optimistic. And this is why our constitution needs to cover all likely situations as far as possible. I believe we should have the ability and democrat as the democratically elected body locally to have some oversight, checks and balances if our backing is desired as, desired as a key partner. The constitution put forward not only ignores the guideline documents that we voted on two months ago, as we have been mentioned, it also assumes the benefit of having our backing without allowing us any significant oversight, so I can pick that up there, or control. Um, so there's 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 that sort of anomaly. Um, my second point is about the decision not to incorporate. And I understand we talked about the the, 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 the model from Helston, and you know, I do understand that. Um, so I've run a, a limited company with my husband for 13 years, and in the last five years, I've set up two, two community interest companies in view. It's not difficult to set them up, and there's a reason why incorporation is common practice apart from enabling the town team to act as a legal, legal body, entering into contracts, applying for grants, etc. Even if that doesn't come up, the, the option's there. <clears throat> it also provides limited liability for its partners. Um, I've asked in the last month that we obtain legal advice, and that's already been voted on um, a couple of months ago, on our exposure to risk as the lead partner of an unincorporated body. And I believe this something, is something we need to take really seriously. Um, we have already passed a resolution on this, uh, I've written this before, um, but we are considering endorsing a constitution without that key information. I want this document to be right for all parties so that the town team can get on with its aims of taking projects forward, getting funding, building relationships with other organisations, etc, etc. But I don't feel I can endorse the constitution as it is because I don't believe the balance is right in terms of maximising the town team's power to act while also protecting this council. Okay. Um, just going to briefly about kind of the argument. When you were sort of talking about the projects and us needing democratic oversight and things like that, you know, there is an argument. I would agree with that if we're talking about any kind of property we own, any land we own, everything like that. If a private entity seeks funding from the county and seeks help from the county to deliver one of those projects. Are we really in a position, you know, do we need to be involved in that? Do we need democratic oversight of a private business delivering a new facility, for example? I would say that you know if, if, if somebody wants to take over the venue, it's got a rock ball yes. in there and an ice cream thing. It is because do we really need to sit here and decide how we do it and give them permission. Well, it, this is that's just the counter yeah, argument we, to it. Yeah, we, we might. If an entirely private body wants to fund another entirely private body and set up a commercial business, then we would have just our input into the planning system, and that would be quite right. Mm. But the town team is not quite that. And the way town teams are funded and the way town teams work across the country are not quite that. They are more representative of the community than that. And they present themselves as being representative of the community. And because of the way that they're constituted and the way they're set up as these bodies which are not quite elected and not quite appointed and not quite commercial, I think that there is a little bit of an accountability gap if you're not really careful. So 
I say again, when they put their banging bow out to get funding, they're going to hit some sort of democratic oversight. They're going, at some point, usually it's going to be from the council or from the government in North Korea. It would be incredibly embarrassing if they were seeking funding from those sources and we had a different agenda, we had a different idea of how those services were delivered. So I think that, that our input has, to, you know, we might be a ragtag bunch, but at least people can come and shout at us. They can't come and shout at Dan to you in that way. They understand how we get to sit around this table. People don't really understand how people get up to sit around the counting table. The count I think that we are the piece of the jigsaw that has been diminished too much in the town teams for both governments. And I'm saying that. I think it was next. Yeah, I, I can see this sort of argument going backwards and forwards quite a bit, to be honest. But I think one of the things that's really important for us to perhaps get in our minds is that the town council is not responsible for everything that goes on with you. Well, there's a whole lot of activities that are delivered by other organisations, like very good organisations. You've got Linkside, which is delivering a whole load of social enterprises. You've got things like the Tourist Information Centre, all the independent businesses which are operating and doing really good things for the town. Right. So <coughs> for us to expect to have carte blanche to control everything that perhaps another organisation might want to do is not necessarily perhaps as realistic or as easy or as given perhaps as Councillor Cole thinks it might be. Um, I want to point out that this council and its um, underlying um, aims and objectives, I forgot what the document is called now, but Frankie prepared it for us and this council has endorsed it. But we do have a very specific commitment to economic health and job creation and making sure that the economy is working well here. <laughs> And, and, and what I see here also is a council that at the beginning of this council, we said, and there's a very strong drive to be as consultative, consultative, consultative <laughs> as possible and to actually talk to the community, ask them what they want and work with people that are going to bring forward ideas and, and perhaps help them to um, bring those ideas forward. And the town team, actually is that. It is that independent group of representatives of our community. Um, and it's not, when we say nobody really understands how these people get elected, it, it, it follows a very detailed, laid out group and set of people and, and how they get together and what representatives of the different sectors that make up our business market, business base are. So it's all open and transparent. It's not, it's not hidden away anywhere. It's, it's very clear who these people are and what they're trying to do. Um, and this independent group, hey presto, they brought forward a really positive agenda. In fact, they've done a great piece of work, which possibly is the best piece of consultative work um, that's been done in Butte over the last couple of years. Um, and it brought forward some great ideas. And some of those ideas, yes, might involve town council turf, some of them might not include town council terms. Let me give you an idea of one of them, because I know that there is or there was funding available for this. Cornwall Council had a, a funding pot available to help retail businesses and town centres improve their shop fronts and facades with small grants being made available. Well, oh, that's the sort of, exactly the sort of thing the town team could deliver and it really mm -hmm. wouldn't have to refer back to this council. Well, I'm getting that one. Yeah. Why would we want to be involved? And, and the whole point of the town team is that it isn't the town council. That's the whole thing behind it. And if we follow Councillor Commonwealth's desire, well, it might as well be the flipping town council. Because if the town team can only get ideas passed that are endorsed by the town council, well, the town council might just as well do that anyway. And I think that we have a, a, a stated position here that we should listen and support this independent group. Um, in fact, Councillor Tame said in one of her earlier pieces this evening, listen to the community and representing its best interests is perhaps the thing that we ought to be doing. So the town team has come up with effectively a very lightweight um, proposition as to how it's going to govern itself. I'm going to say lightweight. What that enables it to do is to um, effectively 
help other organisations bid for funding to deliver the ideas. I don't think there's any possibility that the town team itself would ever, at this point, consider direct delivery of any of these projects. It would only ever work with other partners, such as the town council, to deliver the projects that it might have. It does need to have the endorsement of the town council because, of course, if any funds come in as a result of the bids that it might make in partnership with other organisations, there needs to be an accountable body. Those are words that are used to make sure that there is some form of um, authority that has responsibility for the money and make sure it's spent as is promised. Um, and I don't see any problem at all with that. So I feel that we as a council somehow have set out to say we need to listen to our community. The community then has responded, or part of our community has then responded and come back with a very ambitious and good piece of work and, and wants to move forward. Obviously, the town team itself hasn't particularly liked or felt appropriate the rules that were laid out to it by um, by members of this council and transition view, I should add as well, that, that brought that paper forward for them to consider. But that's their right. And the town team considered very carefully. It didn't discard those thoughts. It went over all of those papers very, very carefully to make them at length. Um, but it's come up with a different set of proposals. I don't think endorsing those proposals, we could seek legal advice on them at a future point if we need to, but I don't think endorsing those principles or endorsing what the town team wants to do at this point is anything negative or could have any negative impact on this council at all. In fact, only good things I think could come from it. And I think any councillor that sort of seems to want to assassinate that group or do a character assassination or whatever has been put forward is mistaken and just leaving us all astray if I'm honest. Be careful. <laughs> You've had war and assassinate this big meeting. <laughs> um, Katie was first, then Jackie, then Again, I'm going to have to caution all of us. We're at eight o'clock. Yeah, we have got a skate park presentation. You, you do it. Because I, I need clarity on this because Philippa made point of order. Yeah. And I wasn't sure if you'd made the chair's ruling on that point of order, which was standing on the 2.7. Yes. Um, so my understanding is that Fiona, who doesn't work for us full time, has looked at the documents. She is also working on the power exchange. She is also working on a vote we made on George Court involving some people. So quite what I was hinting at is she has already had a massive work vote, which some of which I can't discuss because it involves legal things. She has looked at this paper. She is seeking outside legal experts to advise on this, along with several other things that most of us should be aware of. And we've got two thousand pounds in the budget. We're having to try and work out who we go to first, how we pay them, and you know, like I say, we're we're in a public meeting at the moment, so I'm having a difficulty making ruling on it because it's an incredibly complex one to rule on. Because if I say right, bang, we're doing that, I might have pulled her and the funds away from something else that we've already resolved to do as well. And this is why I kind of need advice and I need to be able to possibly move into a confidential session. The chair, I would, I would put it to you that the, you know, this council made a resolution. There was three resolutions there. Um, and we can talk about the ins and outs of two of them, which are complex. But the third one is, you know, should a council makes a resolution, we can't, it can't be, the, the council has made a resolution. It yeah, can't be for somebody else to go away and say, well, actually, no, we're not going to do that. They haven't, no, sorry, I'll, but if, if that's what you took from what I just said, I, I must have worded it quite badly. They, nobody has decided not to do it. Yeah. Our legal officer has a massive workload, which we know we're going to have a discussion in a closed session afterwards about this because some of you aren't quite aware of some of the issues. Yeah. She has a massive workload. She works part time. She has looked at it. She has decided that we need out 
to meet the criteria that you know that Philip has proposed that we need expert outside legal advice. So it is being looked into. Okay. So what I'm saying, Chair, is as a point of order has been raised, you need to make a ruling whether you accept that point of order or whether you don't before we continue talking about it. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I accept that we, we did make that resolution. Um, <coughs> if we're gonna if, if we're gonna wait for that, we will have to do that. We're gonna be waiting a very long time. But that, that that's that's sort of as far as I can go. When we move to confidential session, I will be able to tell you more. But I'm, I'm, I'm unclear on this chair. I have to say, are you accepting the point of order? Yes. If you accept the point of order, we cannot discuss this. Until we have the okay, then yeah, that, 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 that will have to be the, the case. Yeah, you know, we. That's what we are. We are, yeah. Unfortunately, we're, we're, we're putting yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It's, we, yeah, we have, we have, all right. Go on. It, it's possible to endorse something. It's quite. Beefy document, and the my reading of it, it doesn't. Um, Sorry, point of order. You just accepted my point of order that we can't discuss this anymore until we've had legal advice. Mm. So, why have you now asked? Well, I'll carry on. Then. I yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I thought we were quite. I, 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 in all honesty, I, 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 I don't think we will get to the point where we do discuss it, but we will take legal advice. So, we use one to make. I was reading the agenda item. That was all. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a good yeah, idea. <laughs> um, yeah, well, like I say, when we get to the confidential session, things might become slightly clearer. But yeah, we will table that until we can find and afford legal advice. And that will be our. <laughs> you may be <laughs> Councillor Sullivan. It's um, the number it's 27 on most ones. Uh, uh, it is 2.7. Right. Hold on. I haven't got the photographic memory. You haven't. I've got that sort in front of me either. Twenty-eight point one. Yeah. It says that all of time in the standing order, except for the conflicts, mandatory statutory requirements, may be suspended by resolution in relation to consideration of an item on the agenda for a meeting. That means that the the standing order that says we can't discuss it, can be suspended, in which case we can. It won't be standing on this. Oh, yeah. It was unfortunate. Well, I made a separate. Um, so, which one is it, Councillor? So I've one. just told you 28.1. I miss a year and I'm back. 28.1. Thank you, sir. 28.1. Where is that? Because I'm looking at it now. It's all the part of the Good pages are nice. The pages are The pages are numbered. No. I think it's page 16. Exactly, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I mean, uh, 28, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think you are correct, Tom, um, but at the same time, we could spend another hour on this, and we're not, we're not going to reach a consensus, and we're going to end up having to wait for the legal advice. Sounds about the flags. <laughs> we're, we're doing flags on that in the letter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, you're, I, I take the point of order, and I would like to be able to withdraw it because otherwise, we, well, yeah, but I was I was going to be a chance. Yeah, yeah. Other, otherwise, we're going to we're going to end up. Playing ping pong with this as much as we are flags, and we're going to end up with a basket case, I think. Um, right, we'll move on with the agenda. <laughs> to appoint a consultant to deliver the food and activity program 2024. <laughs> I will second that. <laughs> Is that really what we're voting on? Yeah. 
package. Does everybody know what we're voting on? Or I call. Yeah, we're, we're appointing somebody to deliver the food and activity program. The same one we discussed last like, no, the Christmas one and all of that. Liam Dart's food and activity program. All in favor. That looks unanimous. Uh, frankly, you're up to receive an update on the consequences. So I can cover the end. Oh, okay. Short update for you. The opening has been postponed to the 26th of March, which is Tuesday again. And um, essentially, the sheer volume of rain that we had in February meant that I got to a position last week where the um, ground workers physically couldn't get any plants or materials on site because so bad which obviously then brought things to um, a halt for a period of days which meant obviously we were unable to finalize the groundworks that we needed in time for the ceremony um, we also did a, another assessment and from the health and safety perspective we made the decision that it wasn't appropriate to have that many people on the site in the condition that it was in um, so, yeah, it wasn't an easy decision to make, and I think it was definitely the right one. Um, given we go up there daily, and things are obviously still in quite bad shape. Um, so, as it stands, the team, which is quite small now, um, is still there and will be at a point where they are removing all the muck away from site towards uh, Monday and the compound on Church Park will then start to be dismantled and removed. Um, we have to give the land on this point some time to recover. So there won't there'll be a period of a week where we aren't going to do anything. Um, and that's to try and let the ground drain as much as possible. With the forecast of no rain in the next week, but we hopeful that it will then improve. Um, the condition um, to allow the tractors to go up and they will essentially be rollering the site um, flat. So from the tower all the way past the previous site and then all the way down onto Church Bar, where they will then scrape the whole of the path to clear it from any debris and muck and everything that's accumulated there. Um, to allow us to make it the path and then start to do the remedial work to um, support the land. Um, it's not going to be quick. It's obviously going to take quite a lot of time for it to recover. We're not going to physically be able to close off the land that needs to recover. So we'll be putting signs up just to make people aware that obviously the more we can stay off the land, the better chance it has. So obviously coming into spring and summer, we're hopeful um, that that will improve. Um, but the project team obviously includes an ecologist, and we are working on our long term plan, which is one year and five years. So, obviously, it is in my something that we've got to monitor. Obviously, the good news is that um, hopefully, by the 26th, the ground will have improved and the tower is looking more remarkable. Um, what they have done is um, really, really good um, top class work. So, yeah. That's it. Unless you have any questions. No. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Anybody, anybody got a question? Oh, definitely yeah, good. Yeah. Any questions, anybody? No, I just wanted to say that I was up there on the during the day in, yeah, in, in my kill, and uh, I nearly lost my boots trying to walk across them. Um, <laughs> God, that's all you needed. That's all. I did. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't see, but I didn't have much of that. Um, and it was very, very much the right decision. We, we couldn't have large numbers of people up there, even if the project had been complete. And the tower is looking resplendent, so way better than it ever had been. So, congratulations. Thank you.
video. To appoint a consultant to undertake the neighborhood development plan and revision. Um, yeah, I'm just going to ask Katie. She's going to do that. Okay. Yes, okay. So, um, apologies for not having enough time to put uh, a little more report in front of you, but I've got some notes and key figures. So, the steering group of the you know, development plans met a couple of times and uh, they agreed to proceed with um, um, sort of tendering for a consul uh, consultant, a plan consultant to help us with the process, and also applying for um, a grant to cover the costs. Um, and so, this is basically what's happened. So, the steering group hasn't actually met recently, um, but there have been some time constraints in there regarding deadlines for the grant, for example. So I've carried on and um, continued with the, the tender process. So the tender was advertised widely. We only had one response, which was from Stuart Todd Associates, who are extremely experienced and have worked on the model of entities in Cornwall and other places. Um, so they have they've submitted a quote, which was for £3,397. Um, and that was that's to carry out the preliminary work that we need to do. Um, and simultaneously, we applied for funding from Locati to get a grant, which sent to Ian. We, we've actually received already, and so that is for £4,481. So the figures add up nicely. So the grant will cover both um, that quote for the works and also consultation software. If, um, we'd like to use. So basically, it's not going to impact on our, on our own funds. Um, the works do need to be completed by March, um, the end of March, so that is possible. And we might have to be a bit flexible with the dates of invoicing and things, but um, basically, the initial of work can be done um, by steward if we choose to appoint him. So, um, the, yeah, the um, the idea initially was that we would have interviews with all the consultants um, who applied, but of course we only have one. Um, and uh, actually, members of the steering group have already met and set up that several people around the table who've actually met with him online already um, as a sort of initial briefing, I think, at the end, the end of last year. So, also to let you know that there's an additional window for applying for more funding from the locality fund, which opens up in April. So we can then apply for £10,000 grant, which I'm sure you would be to do. More than happy. Um, and that is, is pretty much guaranteed. So they are very keen to, to allocate funds and funds to, to communities to get these entities done. Oh, so you meant this guarantee because I was doing it. Mm -hmm. on the yes. <laughs> <laughs> And we promise to get these done within this within this um, current um, term of the national government. Don't know what's going to happen in the future. Um, and also, the intention is to try to have the referendum, which we think we will almost certainly have to have, um, for the revised plan to coincide with um, the May elections, local elections in the country. So basically, everything sort of stacked up nicely. We just about do it all. Um, but I would like you please to agree to appoint Stuart Todd, um, at least for this initial tranche of the funding and the work, and then subsequently he has actually been proposed for for, um, uh, for the second part as well, so the sort of bulk of it which can be paid for by ten thousand pounds. But the steering group hasn't had a chance to look at all of that yet. But that's basically the route where we are now. Make that proposal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Morning, David. Okay. Stay. Thank you very much. We know that was unanimous. Thank you very much. Well, sorry. Please excuse us. Okay. Yeah. Well, nice to see you. Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
could have been. I'm not sure there's anything to discuss because we've we've kind of resolved to do it. We've got we've got a protocol in place that hasn't been changed, so. We're kind of noting rather than just we're noting that it. they assumed we were going to adopt a policy where they had to ask us. Um, I, I guess so. We, but we don't have a policy. The one that's in place ask. says that we will point yeah. the strategy. Hello. And with that, that in mind, thing. obviously now in June, we have a new monarch and his birthday is in June. So do we need to amend the current one to allow us to? Because we, we only allowed the lowering and the raising of the national flag for two days, but now the king's birthday is in June. We probably should fly his flag on his birthday. From, uh, you, you're really testing my memory of which of these policies we've got. Yeah. From memory, the one that currently stands, which was the original one, um, it doesn't have the, the monarch's birthday in it. I've added that in for this one, the monarchist that I am. Um, but I don't think the original one. So we're not going to fly his flag on I don't. Well, no, that's not. The council hasn't agreed that, so. No. <laughs> 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 yeah, definitely not. Tom. Can I just check? Don't need to kind of. Please do, Tom, because I'm struggling to remember which is which. which so am I. Do, do, we, do we have a problem? I, I can't. A, a policy or a protocol was adopted for another one. I'm guessing if you haven't. How, how is that resolution <laughs> worded? <That's> a... <laughs> <laughs> if it was reworded, I'll need to check the resolution. We will review people. it in 12 months, then we're in the process of reviewing. If it was worded that it is for 12 months, then we've well, got a completely like different policy. It looked like a disciplinary policy. Yeah. And it was to be reviewed every 12 months. And it wasn't, you, you wouldn't suddenly cease to have a disciplinary policy. Oh, yeah, no, that's, that's, what, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. 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 so we'll, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll go with that. It and defers to the existing between the first two seconds when you have already. I might personally put in a request on behalf of the king to fly to the Which the council will then have to review. That is the standard. Yeah, that's what I was thinking is, yeah, this this year and well, and every year going forward, we have a free day where arguably the union flag should be flown alone. But the, the, there's nothing to stop new requests coming I, in I, being I judged on the I, basis yeah, of the last president. As I am his representative <laughs> in this parish, I might well put it on his behalf. Um, okay, well, there's no so point. So we're where we were. We are where we're we're in we're in the the fantastic. <laughs> so we agree to attend the Holes for the and Strand Agricultural Show. I mean, it went well last year because anybody I suppose could do it. Yes. Yeah, well, we, we, we held it as a couple probably in December for a discussion. Well, all, all I was going to say is at the uh, show last year, we were given an invitation from the mayor of Hogsley to share their facilities or to, or to put our facilities jointly with theirs. Now, whether that has any bearing on how we go about applying for a picture, I'm not sure. But, uh, well, he was due to attend tonight, but he broke his hand earlier and has been unable to make it. So, but I will. Check on his health tomorrow and inquire. <laughs> right, it's better than my dog, yes, my dog. <laughs> Thankfully, he didn't see what proceeded. So, um, right, I proposed it. Has anybody? Fantastic, all in favour? Please Board remember to take the fire extinguisher with you. The show is on the 22nd of August. Yeah, but a lot of all the stuff to that did. Could we stop flying the flag for the Bulls being stuck in any place for the association? That becomes the flag for it. It's going to require planning consent. You've got a bit of Irish devilry in you tonight. Unfortunately, you've got a bit of Irish devilry in you tonight. You put in the request, we will have to consider it. Yeah. 
Which do press and public use confidential or special nature of the business to be transacted. I all in favor. Against abstain. Great. Okay. I'm gonna to have to ask you to leave, gentlemen. Yeah, we're going, mate. Uh, yeah. <laughs>